If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people who honestly believe they've had encounters with aliens, greys, abductions, lost time, dimensional slips, missing 411, portals, etc., in the woods or outdoors, what was it? In the 1970s, my grandparents were driving on a highway that goes past a small airport near Bozeman, Montana. They were driving a station wagon and were wearing their normal clothes. The next thing they knew, they were driving an old covered wagon, the airport was gone, and they were in the middle of a meadow. They looked at each other, and they were both wearing old-fashioned clothes. Off to their right, they saw an Indian tribe with a huge fire in the middle of their village. They were beating war drums and painting their faces. Just as the Indian tribe noticed the wagon and my grandparents, everything went back to normal. They looked at each other again, and they were wearing their normal clothes and back in the station wagon. Both of my grandparents swear it happened. I have talked to them about it separately on multiple occasions, and their stories never change and are congruent with each other. They both refuse to ever drive on that high road again. I was home alone in this little house I lived in, in the middle of nowhere. It was probably around 2 a.m., and I was just listening to music, enjoying having the place to myself for a change, when all of a sudden my dogs started going crazy. Normally, when someone pulls in the driveway or comes up to the back door, they go to the door they heard the noise beyond and peek through the blinds to see who it is, but this night they are running all around the house from door to door, barking louder than they ever do. When I stood up to go see what the hell they were on about, I noticed that the whole house seemed to be lit up with a deep blue light. Turning into the living room, it became obvious that it was emanating from each window. I put on my shoes to go outside and see who was out there, but by the time I got out there, the light had faded away. There was no sound of a car engine or really anything, and where I lived, you could hear a car coming from a mile away. I felt a chill run down my spine, but I had the weirdest sense of fight or flight where neither option seemed viable, like I was frozen to the spot. I wanted to turn around and get back inside, and then, I just was. Right back in the chair, I was listening to music. As if I just blinked, and there I was. I don't really like telling people about it because it skeeves me out so badly. I live in a pretty secluded part of Washington DC I was in my late teens, and my parents had gone to Seattle for something, so I was put in charge of the property. I was closing everything up, i.e., the barn we own and some other small utility buildings, when I looked up and saw three reddish-orange lights in a triangular formation. They were just floating there, as if they were magnified stars. So magnified, in fact, that everything was slightly illuminated by their warm hue. I'm mesmerized, standing there, and suddenly lose my sense of balance, as if the ground in front of me has begun rising, and I pass out. Next thing I know, I'm on the ground in the barn I had locked up, according to my watch, half an hour before. Needless to say, I was petrified. I scurried to the house with my tail between my legs, scared and confused. I slept not at all that night, and any sense of security I had was gone. Even though I was locked safely in my house, I felt hopelessly exposed. In hindsight, I think it's possible I was lightheaded, opened the barn door, and fell down, but it still shakes me up thinking about it. This happened last spring. I was out walking the foster dog on an overcast day, totally routine and thinking random thoughts, but mostly hoping he wouldn't see a cat so that we could just wrap things up without a dog rodeo. He's a big dog. So, walking the dog, grey day, taking in the quiet, and I'm staring straight ahead as one of the trees ahead of me disappears. As it happens, I also feel off, like a sudden pressure change in a plane. I immediately feel like I saw something I shouldn't have, recognize the weirdness of that particular thought, and know that no one will believe me if I ask about a random tree. Plus, it just sounds nuts, even as I'm thinking about it. It was a lot at once, in what must have been only a few seconds. This particular tree was one of several along the driveway, but it was still off to the side a bit on its own. It's not like I was staring into the woods and shifting focus. I'm still conscious of its absence, and it's super frustrating. I live in a pretty normal rural place in North Alabama. One day, when I was around 14 or 15 in the mid-90s, I was walking down my road, and I dashed off to play in a new set of woods that I had never played in before. Nothing seemed odd about these woods. I say I went in about 430, I walked, and I probably walked for 30 minutes. And then I was like, well, time to go home, so I turned around to go back the same way I came. Nothing weird happened, but I walked, and I walked, it seemed like I was passing the same places over and over again. It felt like it took two hours to get out, I was legit worried, and it shook me. I exited the same area I went into. It was so odd. I got home and checked the time, and it was only 515. 
I don't know if I was just lost and panicked or what. There was a rumor that a house that used to sit in a place in front of it belonged to some witches, and then it was later used for devil worship. I used to find old bottles with who knows what, but I just smashed those. But nothing really evil happened to me in the woods. After a time, I never played in them again. I was moose hunting with two other people. It was my first time where I had to walk for at least an hour by myself and just meet up. On the third trip, it happened. The first two trips were fine, and we all met up where we were supposed to. On my third trip, I was walking across this barren land, always making sure I knew my landmarks. I had to take a piss, and since it was a barren area and who knows who else is hunting moose, I decided to go to the tree line, where I found a path. I only walked at least 20 to 30 steps in. When I walked back down the same path, the whole scenery was completely different. I ended up getting lost, and my phone could ring, but the two others didn't receive my calls. The only way I found them was that they had a shot at something, and I followed that. Some friends and I were on a hike in southern Massachusetts. A small hike up a range called Blue Hills. After we made it to the top and took in the view, we started to descend, and we didn't find ourselves stopping at all to rest or anything. On our way down, maybe about a quarter of the way from the peak, this guy pops out of the side of the trail we were on. There are no separate paths in this area, and it's all just disheveled wood with no paths or, especially, any maintenance. He's wearing brown dress pants, some grimy shirt, and he's holding a plastic bag, like one you'd get at Walmart. He passes us and moves along his way. We think it's a little weird, but we generally forget about it. We get down to about, excuse my preciseness here seven-eighths of the way down, and this guy passes us again. In the same exact way. He comes out of the side of the woods with his plastic bag, passes us, and moves along his way. We all had to stop and process this for a second, and we came up with no explanation. There's no possible way for him to have gotten down there before all of us. He was heading up, and the only path in that area is the one we were on, which we were already on our way down. It was a very strange sensation, and I have zero idea how it happened. We all saw it and have no explanation. Any thoughts? I was about 8 or 9, and my mom told me we were going on a day trip to meet her high school friend. Cool. I grabbed my Game Boy Advance because I knew my mom's friend as kids my age and wanted to show them up in the racing game I had. I overheard this from my mom talking with her friend at her house, they told me to leave the room because they needed to talk about adult things. Little, innocent, curious me wonders, what exactly are adult things that I can't hear? Were they going to throw some new juicy cuss words out? Well, mom's friend had a little girl who would sleepwalk at night. Started when they moved into their new house, in Northern California. It was a suburban area, but not too suburban, a new neighborhood with a lot of empty homes and forest patches in between each community. She was about four years old, and they found her one night in the backyard just sitting there. After that incident, they decide they need to lock her in her room at night and bar up her window so that she doesn't end up in the woods nearby or anywhere besides her room. The story mom, friend, and husband wake up to a loud boom on the side of the house in the middle of the night. I felt like something hit the house because everything shook. They check on their boys, they're good. They didn't hear anything and went back to sleep. They check on their daughter, unlock the door, and realize she isn't in her room. They start to freak out, then hear a knock at the door. They opened it. It's the effing sleepwalking four-year-old daughter. They ask her where she's been, and she says with the men and points down the street. Pissed off dad sees two guys in coats walking down the street. He yells at them and starts sprinting at them. Mom's friend said the coat guys didn't react at all. Coat guys turn the corner, dad turns the corner, and they're gone. Mom and dad check the lock and windows. No tampering. They notify the police, who pretty much say there's not much they can do but will keep an eye out. F and sleepwalking four-year-old daughter is fine. Isn't scared at all. Just tired and goes back to bed. After that, my mom didn't understand why I was scared as hell that night. She believes she was abducted but refuses to tell me what happened. Even my dad tells me that he can't tell me the story. She says it's for my mom to share if she wants it shared, but overhearing this when I wasn't supposed to hear it had me tripping out as a kid. So this was a few years ago, but it still makes me feel super weird to even think about it. So my husband and I went to explore this creepy, super old house in the middle of the woods of Oregon with three of our friends. We had fun exploring it, then started to head back, having about a two-mile hike ahead of us. At some point on the way back, I saw this person sitting down and sobbing. He or she had on really baggy clothes and looked very dirty. They had their heads in their laps, so I couldn't see a face. I had a very strange feeling, and for whatever reason, I just kept walking without going over to help or something. I saw all my friends looking at it, 
but were totally silent. We all started walking a bit quicker, though. Anyway, we kept walking in total silence, and everything just felt weird for a few minutes. Finally, one of our friends says something along the lines of, that guy was really strange. That's where things got really weird. My other friend says, guy? I just saw a dog. Well, that eventually led to us all discussing what we saw. I saw the crying person, one of us saw a dog by itself, one of us saw a man mocking us as we walked by, and one of us just saw a sleeping person. I still don't know what to think of it. So to preface, I have spectacularly bad vision and haven't had a pair of glasses to use for the past few months. I finally got a pair yesterday and was driving home today with my grandma in the passenger seat. I was thinking about a road that we were going to pass and was going to mention to my grandma this cool lake house next to a man-made lake up the hill, where you would not expect a lake to be. As we began to near the road, I saw a short and skinny figure standing next to the mailboxes belonging to the houses up that road. The figure was standing abnormally still and didn't look like it had any hair, but just a large potato Y head. I commented to my grandma, saying, what is that? Uck I was a bit creeped out that someone would construct that there, like a leftover Halloween decoration or something. The figure looked pretty creeptastic and was staring right down the road. I put my eyes back on the road because the road curved, and when I looked back, the figure moved, and it was a girl. Still staring right at us. I was so startled that I said, oh my gosh. I thought that was a scarecrow or something. Just pretty odd, especially as I really thought her head looked like a hairless, featureless potato. When I was about 10 or 11, me and my brother shared a room in this two-story house, but the house was on stilts, so it was like a three-story house or a two-story house with a carport underneath. Anyway, so my bed was next to a window in my room, and one night I woke up at around 3 or 4 in the morning and decided to look out my window, so I went to the bottom of my bed and looked out. My window faced the street and a street lamp, so I looked out to the street, and under the street lamp were these two people. One was really tall, like maybe 8 or 9 feet, and the other was really short, about 3 or 4 feet. The small one was facing the larger one, and the larger one was looking down at the smaller one. They looked like they were communicating, but I couldn't hear anything. About 30 seconds pass, then the small one turns towards my house and runs underneath it really fast, then the tall one looks down the street, then takes off running at superhuman speed, like from 0 to 30 in 2 seconds with really long strides. Then nothing, no sounds or anything, arose, and I never saw them again. I have no idea what I saw, my guess is that it was probably a dream, but it was in so much detail that I could see the oil and tar stains on the road. I really don't know if I was abducted or not, but I witnessed something pretty unexplainable. My ex and I were driving out of my suburban neighborhood super late one night on the way to go eat at Waffle House or something. As we're nearing the exit to my neighborhood, I look up into the sky, and we both notice these three really strange orange lights in a triangle formation. We then stopped the car in the middle of the road to figure out what we were looking at. These lights didn't have the quality of lights you see emitting from a plane or a star. When you look at stars, they are so far away that they almost seem 2D. But these lights felt 3D somehow. These lights were much bigger and seemed closer. Like high enough into the sky to be well above the trees but not above the clouds. And they were just floating there, not moving up, down, left, or right, but eerily still. I really don't know how to explain how still these things were, but it was unnatural, and I know that sounds stupid but that's how it felt when I saw them, and I wish I could explain it better. But when I saw this, I was both mesmerized and sort of in shock. I've always been a UFO enthusiast, and I've always wanted to see something bizarre like this, and finally it was happening. I couldn't take my eyes off of what I was looking at, and. I feel like I didn't for like an hour? I really don't know how much time passed, but it really did feel like an unnatural amount of time. Finally, these globes of light just abruptly dissolved away. It was kind of like they were sucked into a black hole or something. We break our gaze and look at each other, and my ex asks me if I just saw what she saw. And yeah, we couldn't come up with an explanation at all. To this day, no one believes me, and I don't care. I saw what I saw, and I'm now fully confident we're not alone. I'm from New England. This is pertinent to both my level of outdoor experience and my, usually, logic-based temperament. I was living in Portland, Maine, when this happened. There was a rail yard behind my house that I used to love to walk, and the back street of my neighborhood ran perpendicular to what looked like an old logging road. One partly cloudy day, I went down to the trail and was walking in the opposite direction of my usual path. As I got about a half mile in, the sun came through ahead of me. Behind me, a storm is beginning to close in. 
I got this weird sense of warmth, and I swear on everything that I know I saw a small cluster of butterflies, this was very unseasonable for the time of year. I had photos on my old phone of the split in the weather above my head because it was so marked. I was now further down this path than I'd ever gone, maybe a mile plus, and all I saw ahead of me was more open meadows and some large tire tracks. I had every intention to keep walking into the sunny meadow, and I got this intense gut feeling that wouldn't let me go any further. I can't explain why or what happened, but it was almost as if I had a visceral turnaround response. I decided I'd come back with company later because I really couldn't even make myself keep going alone. When I returned a few days later with my boyfriend, the trail was overgrown to the point of impassibility. You couldn't go beyond a half mile without great difficulty. I tried to explain, and he definitely thinks I'm crazy. But this really happened, and I don't know what it was. Okay so. Where do I start? I was walking up to my local park with two of my friends. It was about 9. There is a path when you first walk to the park that leads to this elementary school that I used to go to. There is a fence on the side of it, it is gated, and on the other side of the path is just a hill leading to the park. There is then a street light on the path. We were walking past this, and one of my friends said, what's that? We looked and kept walking toward to seem like a dog. It was just frozen and staring at us. I got closer, and it ran away. Then I saw its spine, and it was nothing that I had seen before. It had short legs but was weirdly long. That's not where it gets interesting, though. We just walked up to the park. When we were leaving, about 10 minutes later, we were walking and wondered if we would be able to see it again. So we stopped and stared down the path. It's more like a concrete path. Then me and my one friend saw this stick man-like thing running down the hill towards the woods. It was about 7 feet tall, maybe a little shorter. Pointed legs and arms, I didn't really get a good look at its head. I saw it for maybe a good 4 seconds. It wasn't really black, it was like black and grey. I saw it clearly, it went in the direction of the street light. It was just running, and then before it got to the path, it vanished. It was terrifying, and I got the chills. I explained it, and then my other friend said he saw the same thing. My other friend didn't, though, I'd guy. That was extremely disturbing. I researched it a little last night and came and saw the black stickman phenomenon. I saw another one like this on this forum group, actually. He said he and his mom saw it run across the road, but his dad didn't. My father unexpectedly passed away six months after I graduated high school, this was years ago, and his unexpected passing took a heavy toll on me, which resonated for years. A few years after he passed away, I was driving in town and took a left turn down the street. After I turn onto this new street, everything suddenly starts to feel desolate. This street is a one-way, two-lane road, with me in the left lane. After making the turn, I notice a truck in the right-hand lane stopped at a red light roughly a block down the street, it's the only other vehicle. As I get closer, I see it's a very old Toyota pickup truck from the early 80s, the exact same model and color as my dad's. This truck was beyond rare due to its age, and as I come closer to the stoplight, this intense feeling comes over me that it's him driving it. As I come to the red light and make a full stop, I look to my right, and my dad is in the driver's seat of the truck, staring forward. I then quickly turn my head forward and say to myself, what did I just see? This can't be happening. I quickly pull ahead, completely bewildered, and turn onto another street. To this day, I cannot explain what happened and have searched everywhere to see if anyone has ever experienced something similar, to no avail. A while ago, I read a post about driving as far as you can in a place that you have never been before to test the boundaries of the matrix or whatever. The theory is that you will eventually meet some sort of block that will prevent you from going any further. Well, I tried it today, and it freaked me out quite a bit. I had about an hour and a half off for lunch today, and I had nothing to do. At first, I was just driving around for no reason, looking for something to do, but then I saw a road that I had never gone down before. That reminded me of the post I saw, so I figured, screw it, I'll try it out. The road was southbound and almost never turned. I drove down the road for about 15 minutes when I came across a closed road. The road led back to where I came from, so immediately I was concerned since that was one of the only roads that led back. The road didn't even seem to have a reason to be closed either. It looked like a perfectly functional road. Nevertheless, I kept on the same road, I wasn't in any hurry. After about 5 more minutes, I noticed that the road was a lot smaller than it had been before. It looked more like a bigger neighborhood road, not a highway. Not 500 feet later, a cul-de-sac. Very confusing. No highway ends in a cul-de-sac. So I turned around and tried to follow the same way out. Then I came to a T in the road. That really ducking confused me. I hadn't turned off that road once. 
I turned around, pulled over, and brought out maps. I was in the opposite direction of where I had started. North. More shockingly, I knew the road that I was on. I take it every day to work. So I just followed it back. No problem. When I got back, I pulled out maps again and tried to retrace my steps. The road goes south. Nowhere is there a curve that heads north. I have no clue what the hell happened. So I have sort of a garage band, we write our own music, and we go out to our land in the rural part of my town to practice so we don't bother the neighbors. And it's kind of off the beaten path. It's not too bad, but it's sort of backwoods. So I was riding home with my brother and his friend. Now the other person driving was our friend Alex. He didn't fully know the way out of there, so he said he would follow us. So we are driving along these gravel roads, and Alex got kind of far behind us but is still within eyesight. So we get to this three-way gravel road intersection, and we turn left. Left or right will get us home just as easily, but left is a little safer. Less hilly and curvy. Anyway, my brother told me to look behind us and make sure Alex saw which way we went. Sure enough, Alex's car rolls around the corner, and I specifically see the headlights shine in my eyes. So we keep driving. Alex's headlights shine into the car we are in. Suddenly, they just disappeared. Someone just pressed delete on Alex. We look, there's nothing, we turn the car around and drive back, there's nothing, we even got out of the car and looked around, there's nothing. At this point, we are just freaking out. Alex just disappeared. Out of nowhere, she just went away. So we called him, and he answered and said he went right on the intersection because he likes to drift, it's more fun, and he doesn't recall any car behind him at any point. So what happened? The three of us watched Alex's car turn onto the road, follow us, and then disappear. It still kind of freaks me out. Way back in 2004, I was living with a friend in England. We used to go walking in the countryside, out in the fields and all that. One time we were out walking, we saw a mini forest type thing towards the edge of a field. Curious, we went over to it. As we approached, we noticed a little pathway or gap in the trees, so we followed it. As we went along through the trees, the pathway became like an archway, as if the trees were growing into the perfect shape over the path. This went on for ages, maybe half an hour. Eventually we saw daylight at the end, so we powered on along and made it out of the exit into open air. Outside looked normal, countryside, with the exception of a strange settlement before us. It looked like the buildings were made out of junk, well, wooden junk. There were tiny people, four feet, maybe five feet max, always wearing rags. They were all muddy and unkempt. They stared at my friend, and I felt like we were aliens from another world. There wasn't a road, just a muddy path through the center of the buildings. No power lines. Nothing modern. While standing there, I suddenly had this feeling that I had to leave. I said to my friend that we had better go, so we went back the way we came. It was a pity this happened in 2004, since we didn't have the tech to handle everything easily that you'd have nowadays to take photos and videos of everything. Anyway, we went back and discussed it a few times in the intervening months. Eventually, I couldn't stand it anymore and convinced my friend that we had to go back with a digital camera. When we returned, we found the trees in the entrance, but when we followed the path, it lasted a few minutes, and we emerged into another field. A normal field. We walked the perimeter of the trees, which turned out to be just a little square of undeveloped or unused land in the middle of four fields. No archway. No village. Suffice it to say that there was no point in taking photos. I'm convinced to this day that if we hadn't left when we did, we'd still be there, wherever or whenever there is, to this day. Another missing person was reported. There's this place where I used to go with a few friends of mine. It's a little spot in the woods on the lake with enough room to pitch a few tents. So it was just three of us, and I believe it was our second night there, and we had been struggling to find firewood. It was towards the end of the season, and a decent amount of people knew of the place, so the wood was pretty well picked over around the clearing. The drive is like 40 minutes down an awful two-track, so we didn't feel like making the drive to civilization for more firewood. After wandering around in the dark without much luck, we stumbled upon this area, and there was so much dry wood just lying around everywhere. At first, I thought we got lucky and hit the jackpot, but then I realized I could make out our campsite through the trees. We had literally walked through this area multiple times, even earlier in the daylight, and there was no wood. Then I got this overwhelming feeling of dread. Nobody said anything, and we all just ran back to the site. I actually threw my snack away to run faster. After getting back, we were like, hey, that was weird, huh? Because none of us actually wanted to talk about it, as we were still stuck sleeping there for the night. I have no idea what happened, and I haven't thought of this experience in a while.
So strange. This happened about a decade ago. An ex-girlfriend and I were bored and going out for a regular little high school kid date, a cup of coffee, hanging out by the waterfront, etc. So, we are driving in her car, and I pop in the latest Bouncing Souls CD, excited to play it for her. And, after feeling like I zoned out for a minute, I look at the CD player and notice that over an hour has passed. We are on a random early track, as the CD must have looped, and about three blocks from my house, kind of pulled over, kind of waiting at a side street. I ask her what happened, if I had fallen asleep or something. And she says, no. She has no idea what happened either, but she felt weird and wanted to go back to my house instead of going anywhere. So we return home and sleep at my place. I tried to bring the night up a few times, but she never wanted to talk about it. Or she would say we must have just zoned out, etc. But that's weird, as I'm a pretty attentive person, never experienced anything like this before or after, and was completely sober at all times relating to this event, as was my ex. Is this glitch type territory? Is there a logical explanation that eludes me? It's odd that for something that happened so long ago, I can remember everything, except the missing hour or so, perfectly. Strange. I've had a few weird occurrences in my day, but I'm not a big believer in superstitions or anything supernatural. But I could never explain this lost hour. This experience has always annoyed me, and I still don't really know what to make of it. A few years ago, my then boyfriend and I were out on a small hike. It was a really simple path with only two trails. I'll try to explain them in the most concise way possible, but I'm terrible at describing things. The main path started at the parking lot, went in a straight line, and hit a dead end when it reached the water. The second trail extended off from the main trail on the right-hand side and ended at a dead end, where it also reached water. Essentially, the two paths made a sideways T either path you took, you had to turn around and walk the exact same way you came. We started from the parking lot and walked halfway down the main path. After about five minutes, we reached the halfway point, took the right onto the second path, went to the water, and talked for a little while. We headed back down this path, reached the main path, and decided we just wanted to go back to the car and get our water. We took a left back onto the main path, coming the exact way we had originally. We walked for what felt like forever, it was surely longer than the original five minutes it took us to get to the smaller path. We both stopped and started discussing how we should be at the car already, considering the idea that we might be lost. I pulled out my phone and searched a map of the park, it was exactly as I described it, all dead ends. Without straying from the path, there was literally no way of getting lost. The path was very clear and very well maintained. We were definitely still on it. We figured we were probably just tired and dehydrated, so it felt much longer than it was. We kept walking in the same direction. After a little while longer, we saw the smaller path up ahead, to our left, the same path we had just taken a left to get out of. It literally made no sense whatsoever. There was absolutely no plausible way we could have walked in a complete circle. Either we would have had to walk out in the water or we would have passed the parking lot. We felt a little unsettled and vaguely joked that it was a glitch. We kept walking in the same direction and ended up at the car, just as we should have the first time. We even stopped to check the wooden map in the parking lot, still the same T-shaped, dead-end paths. We brought it up a few times throughout our relationship and how weird it was, but we could never figure out how in the world our five-minute walk turned into us walking for almost an hour in a circle. Many, many years ago, a group of friends and I wanted to go to this haunted, abandoned place in the woods. It was famously hard to find. Basically, a train in the 1800s was carrying much-needed medical supplies. A station dock worker was waiting for the train to arrive, but it hadn't shown up when it was supposed to, and when he went down the tracks to look for it at night, he was killed by the late train. Or something like that. Typical urban legend stuff. Anyway, the train dock had since fallen to the force of time and nature, but apparently the worker could still be seen carrying his lantern up and down some old tracks. We decided to check it out. The county road we were heading down was supposed to have an outlet road that would bring us within a mile of this location. Two people who were with us knew the way and said they'd been there multiple times. There were two of us, and we went up and down this road several times trying to find it, but no outlet existed. After more than an hour of looking, we pulled onto a gravel patch next to the tree line of the state route and talked it over with the other vehicle. I was driving, and a few friends were in the back seat. I turned off my headlights and shut the engine off, expecting to sit there for a while wondering whether we should continue or not. Several friends insisted on going home since it was super late. There's no guarantee we'd even find it before the sun came up. Others insisted they knew where it was, and we couldn't be more than a half mile away. They distinctly remember landmarks and where the road was. 
It had been a while and a different season, so perhaps overgrowth had made it hard to see. Throughout the debate, I grew restless and agreed with my passengers that we should just head home and maybe do a bit more research to find out exactly where this road was. Everyone conceded. I turned back around in my seat, started the car, and flipped on the headlights. It illuminated before us a dirt road and path clearly and distinctly right in front of our faces. Everyone slots their shit. Like a jump scare from a horror movie. We all agreed this was not here when we pulled over. The gravel patch was barely enough for one car to fit, let alone two. We all recalled the thick lining of trees, and we had been up and down this road so many times that there's no way we'd miss this spot. We were unnerved so much that many of us didn't want to go down the road. I didn't want to drive and be swallowed up in whatever freaky witchcraft revealed this unnatural illusionary gate. The car next to us seemed equally disturbed. It didn't take much more than a simple nod, and we just went about our way home. So lately, an old memory has resurfaced in my mind that's been bothering me because I never got an explanation for it. To make a decent estimate, I was probably about 10 to 12 at the time of this memory, making it 6 to 8 years ago, I'm 18 now. One afternoon, I was in my mom's room going through the laundry she had recently folded in search of an outfit to wear for the night. I think I was going to a friend's house or something. My house is kind of old, but not ancient. There are creaks and cracks, but nothing makes me suspect the paranormal. As I'm putting clothes together, I hear the floorboard snap just outside my mom's door. There was another bedroom door right next to my mom's door where my dad sleeps, snoring problem. I looked up and saw something emerging from my dad's room. The outline of a tall man, probably a little more than six feet, walked into the doorway of my mom's room. However, it wasn't entirely humanoid. The man didn't have so much of an outline but was made entirely of purple TV static. As he stood there in the doorway, the static seemed to move. I remember his limbs being distinguished in some way, but not as if there were an actual outline, like I said. So of course, little me sits there in terror for about 10 seconds, staring at this static figure. I bolted out of my mom's room, directly through the purple man, as I so dearly call him now. I don't remember if I went back to my mom's room later. Later that night, I was outside with my mom on my porch as she smoked. It was a warm summer night, and I remember glancing off in the distance and seeing the purple man walk through the woods far off in my sight. I asked my mom what it meant. She had no explanation but said my dad used to see things just like that when he was younger. Flash forward four to six years. I'm at my best friend's house talking about weird experiences. She mentions that a purple boy used to run through her house in a static figure. It terrified her so bad that she used to not go to the areas that she saw him in, such as the bathroom. I had never told her about the purple man, but I told her the entirety of my story, which was buried in my memory until that time. I think I was around 15 or 16 at this time. I've heard stories of others seeing shadow or scribble people, but never static people. What kind of incident is this? I'm curious to know what you guys think. This happened to me when I was 10 years old, in Calgary, Alberta, in 1970. I was walking home from school, cutting across the school sports field. Our house wasn't far, we lived across the street from the school. There weren't any other kids around since I had stayed late for a volleyball practice, and the rest of the students had gone home 45 minutes earlier when school let out for the day. It is about 4.30 in the afternoon. Something caught my attention from the corner of my eye, and I stopped and turned to the right to look at it. Floating directly above a house facing a school yard was a large UFO. I was in the middle of the football field, so this is about 60 to 70 yards distant from where I stood. The UFO is big and almost touches the roof of the house. It is completely centered on the house, but because it is so big, it is also above the house on the left and right. The lots there are 50 feet wide, which puts the UFO at about 150 feet across and perhaps 25 to 30 feet tall. It is very bright, giving off a harsh white light that is difficult to look at since it hurts my eyes. I look back towards my house and see a car and a motorcycle on the side street, which intersects the street with the UFO. That street is about half a block away, and I remember being surprised and confused that the drivers are not reacting to the UFO, which clearly must be visible to them and is so obvious since it is so bright, but the traffic continues as normal. At that point, I become aware that something is forcing me to turn my head back towards the foe. I'm turning, and my field of view is changing, but I'm not the one doing it. I struggle to turn away, but I simply can't control any part of my body. I remember a feeling of panic, and then the next thing that I can remember, I'm walking into my house. It is about 9.30 at night, and it is dark outside. I can't recall anything from the last five hours. My parents were furious with me for being so late. Apparently, 
My parents and my two brothers have been trying to find me for hours. A voice or thought in my head tells me to tell them that I'm not feeling well and I need to go to bed. I have no idea where that voice or thought came from, but I do exactly as it suggests and run upstairs to my room and go to bed. The next day, I still can't seem to explain what happened, and my mother is even more angry with me since my new school shoes are ruined, since the tops of them are all scuffed and dirty, like I was dragged face down across the ground with my feet still dragging on the ground. I told my older brothers what happened, and they suggested I keep quiet about it since nobody would believe me. Good advice, as it turns out, since in the many years since, most of the people I have shared the story with don't really know what to say afterward. Many years later, I was looking at my old school workbooks from that time, and they are full of drawings of UFOs, all of the same design, and with more detail than I can recall from memory. For example, in my memory, I can't remember seeing any windows in the UFO since the light was too bright to make out details, but in my drawings, there were large round windows all around the UFO, some with faces looking out. This has happened several times when hiking in a specific, general area, around 10,000 acres, in New Hampshire, US. Looking at my watch or noticing the position of the sun in the sky, it's hours later in the day than it should be. I can't explain the lost time. This area was settled by Abenaki in the old days. There is at least one artifact, a bowl carved in a rock ledge near a waterfall, that was recorded by archaeologists. An Indian trail is shown on old maps. I have found petroglyphs, I suspect, graves, and other things. The area was settled by Europeans for a time, but they all left or died. There are only cellar holes and cemeteries now. It's all gone back to the woods. There is a lot of iron in the bedrock. Compasses don't always work right. It seems to me that lightning hits some of the hills much more often than is typical, though I'm not any kind of expert in that field. I am experienced in hiking and camping in the woods. The amount of lightning scars on trees is crazy, in my opinion. I don't drink or use drugs. I have never had lost time anywhere else. I was only 10 at the time. I lived in the south, in the middle of the country. It was always quiet, with very deep woods behind our house. My brother, who is four years older than me, always made me play in the woods with him, mostly to avoid our crazy drunk father. We had a usual little pond area we hung around in, where we'd try to build forts, climb trees, dumb boy stuff, you know. That day was tree climbing. I picked an old oak tree that must have fallen down at some point because it was at a weird acute angle, even though no other trees supported it. I was near the top, holding on to a slim branch, and just looking at the view. My brother yelled something at me from below, and as soon as I looked at him, the branch snapped. I only remember it snapping and then waking up on the dirt. Supposedly, I completely tumbled down the entire tree. My brother said it looked like a scene from a cartoon. I was completely dazed, though, my body felt like shit, and he had to carry me the entire way back. But that's when I noticed the first weird change. We were dressed differently than when we left. I mean completely. I didn't think it through too much, to be honest, I was still processing everything. After we got back to the house, I almost completely lost it. The entire house was different. Nothing was in the same place. New things were there, and random old things weren't. My room was almost completely different. I finally broke down and told my brother, but he laughed it off, blaming it on the fall. That wasn't even the tip of the iceberg. Everything was different. Some were major, and some were minor. The biggest, however, was my family. Instead of my father being crazy drunk, he hadn't had a drink since I was born. He was calmer and nicer. My mom wasn't so beaten down anymore. She was actually confident. She had emotions. My brother, too, was way more social. He's actually what kept us together, too. He listened and believed everything I said. The only concern he had was for my life before. He answered every question. They tried to fill me in on every memory that I should have. The funny thing, too, is that he swore that we never really went out to the woods often at all. He was right too, all of our little forts were gone. He told me I was actually the one who made him go out there, even though he also swears this is something I've never asked before. It's just insanely bizarre. Looking back now, it still messes with me. I knew everything before was real. Even after telling tons of people, including therapists, and having barely anyone slightly believe me, I know it was all real, but I'm still not sure what it means. Does anyone have any ideas? I know it's an insane story, but it's something I've never gotten past. Whatever happened that day was a blessing in disguise, but everything before still haunts me. About four years ago, my girlfriend, now wife, and I were house-sitting my mom and her boyfriend's home while they were out of town. It was a fairly large new and modern home with a very open layout, but because I had lived there briefly, 
I had my own room there too. We were drinking wine, giggling, and watching TV. We had at most about two glasses of wine each, so we had almost finished the bottle together, but still not enough to get us blacked out drunk. To this day, I have never actually blacked out from drinking alcohol. Anyway, we are on the couch watching TV and laughing, and the next thing that happens is that I wake up to my alarm, waking me up for work. I had a bad habit of not setting my alarm until the night before, but my alarm was set for me to get up for work. I am in my mom's bed, and my girlfriend is in my room in my bed. We both woke up at the same time, but because of the distance between the rooms, there is absolutely no way she woke up to my alarm. She was in my room with the lights on and her clothes on at the end of my bed. I was under the covers in my mom's bed, with my clothes on but the lights off and my alarm set. I remember waking up, and about 7 seconds later, she was also walking to the room as if we had woken up at the same time. I look at her, and trying not to be weirded out, I just simply ask, what happened? She had no explanation as to what happened. I asked her what the last thing she remembered was, and it was the exact last thing I remembered too. Our memories both stopped at the same time. We still talk about it to this day, not knowing what happened that night. I'm not sure if anyone else has had experiences like this. But it would be great to have an explanation as to how a casual hangout can end up feeling like we are in some sort of time glitch or alien abduction. About three years ago, I made a short trail through some woods so I could easily get to a nice beach with my dog on our walks. The trail is fairly short and was made by breaking or snipping dry or dead tree branches that intruded on travel, but it was a low effort operation. This trail has been used for about three years, almost every day or night. Clear of obstructions, well trampled path. Use it in the dark, no problem. We skipped a day due to rain, then went through that trail today. There are sharp, old growth, dry branches that intrude onto the travel path at face height. As if they haven't been snipped or broken previously. I almost poked my eye out. I figured perhaps a branch or two had fallen or something, but then I noticed a bunch of other branches intruding on the path at inconvenient places or angles. I got a strange feeling and got out of there. I wonder if this is some sort of alternate timeline? Thoughts? I was in the Navy a few years ago and was on my way to another base for training. It is about 5 in the morning, and I cannot recall if I was still pregnant with my daughter or if I just gave birth to her a few months prior. So as I'm driving, it's very dark, but you know when the light just starts to come in and it's so beautiful? The roads were very clear and empty. I got a phone call on Bluetooth, and when the conversation was done, I looked down for just a split second, literally, and when I looked back up, there was a huge backup that appeared out of nowhere. I had just looked down, and there was no traffic, no other cars, and nothing up ahead. I kid you not. Everything was clear and smooth. The next thing I knew, I was flying into the back of another car, which would have surely caused a horrible accident for many cars up ahead of me. It was too late to stop, so I closed my eyes, and my heart stopped with fear. I don't know what happened after that. I ended up in the right shoulder lane and did not crash into anything, not even the concrete barrier, but I ended up perfectly situated behind a car. After reading that, how did I end up safely put? No harm, no damage, no nothing, no worried honking, concerned citizens. It was straight silence, like nobody even saw it at all. I can assure you that it was something no one could miss, no matter how hard they tried. It's like I flew into a portal to a new reality or something, like nobody budged or anything. I was camping in a campground in North Georgia with some friends. It was starting to rain, so everyone left their tents in the woods and decided to rent one of the on-site cabins for everyone to sleep in. I decided I'd just sleep in my car because they wanted to stay up late and I was tired from kayaking all day. I woke up to the rain stopping, and it was kind of cold in the car, and I had forgotten my sleeping bag in my tent. I checked the cabin to see if there was any room left, and the light was on and everyone was fast asleep, 3 a.m. I didn't want to squeeze in, so I decided to trek my way to my tent in the dark with a small pen light. In order to get to my tent, I had to pass by everyone's that they had left. Mine was the last one, and even then, it was 50 feet at least from the previous tent before it. I got in my tent, covered up with my sleeping bag, and prepared to catch the last few hours of sleep before the sun rose. No more than 10 to 15 minutes after I got into my tent, I began to hear light whispers right outside the tent door. They weren't in English, and to my recollection, they were indecipherable, not any language I had heard at all. Just as the voices started, two orbs appeared together outside the tent. They weren't the same glare as a flashlight would make, and both were of two different colors that, to the best of my ability, had no real distinct color. Just colorful. The whispers outside the tent began arguing louder between each other, but still in a hushed tone. 
and as the whispers grew louder, the lights began swirling around the tent. Behind me, to the side, to the front. Not in the movement that one could make with flashlights, and at this point I realized no footsteps could be heard. I uncovered myself and kneeled on the tent floor, preparing for the zipper to come undone like in a horror movie, and I was flipping through my mind on what option to take. I was the most terrified I had ever been. Fight or flight. The lights swirled faster, and the voices grew louder but still breathy and whispery. My mind raced, and I was sweating despite the cold. And then, just like that, the lights shut off like switches, the whispers stopped, and there was nothing but the silence of an empty wood. I stood there as still as I could, and I didn't dare go outside the tent until the sun came up. It was, and still is, the scariest moment of my life. I hope this makes sense. So the backstory is that my family owns a cabin out in the middle of the woods in Michigan. The nearest neighbor is about a mile away and uses the same driveway we do, but they also only use their cabin for summer trips, don't live there year-round, and were not there at the time this happened. I put driveway in quotes because it is a hidden three-mile dirt road through the forest off another back road that leads to the nearest town 20 miles away, so it's not like someone could stumble upon it by accident. I have gone up there every summer since I was a little kid, and several years ago I started going with my friends for a week of vacation. There is no cell phone signal or solid electricity, so it is a nice getaway. There are some electric lights and plug-ins that are powered by a generator, but 95% of the lights are propane. About four years ago, I was there with my friends, and we were all sitting around a table in the main cabin when we heard the generator turn on, it's incredibly loud and in another building that was locked. No one else thinks this is weird until I explain that it will only turn on if someone turns an electric light on or plugs something into an outlet, all of which work in the main cabin. We decide to go check it out and go outside, and it immediately shuts off. I check the door to the shed, it's in, and it is still closed and locked. The night continues on, and we proceed to hear it turn on and off several more times. Each time we try to find a cause, we come up empty-handed. We continue playing cards when I see a bright flash out in the woods. The only thing I can compare it to is the way lightning lights up an area at night, but more concentrated and without an actual source. The woods were just suddenly illuminated in this one area, then dark again. The entire front of the cabin has windows, and I was facing them so I could see them clearly. I don't say anything, thinking I'm just seeing things when they happen again a few minutes later. One of my friends also saw both flashes and said something about them, and another friend confirmed we saw them too. At this point, we are all freaking out at what is out in the woods. We all grabbed flashlights, the four of us guys do, the girls stayed inside and locked the doors, and went searching out in the edge of the woods, where we saw the light, and in a big circle around the cabin. There was nothing to be found, but after that, the generator stopped turning on by itself, and there were no more flashes of light. Nothing like that has ever happened before in my 24 years of going there. This happened a few years ago, when my sister and I went camping with a bunch of friends and family. We stayed at a place called East Creek, which is right off RT-47 in New Jersey. Well, we had a great weekend with lots of fun until the end. On Sunday, we had breakfast and decided that before we started packing, we should go walk this trail behind the cabin baseball field. It's a pretty well-maintained trail that goes in a big circle around the lake. So we started to walk the trail, and it was a little muddy, but whatever, so we kept walking for about 5-10 to 10 minutes with no obstacles and no other trail at all. We stopped and turned around because the trail got way too muddy, and then all of a sudden I got a weird feeling, and everyone stopped talking. My sister and friend turned a slight bend in the trail and just stopped, so the rest of us were only 10 steps behind. So my friend asks, what wrong, guys? With no reply. So we get up there, and there's a giant tree blocking the trail, so I said, where in the hell did this come from? Everybody started to ask questions, did you hear it fall? Where did it come from? At this point, everyone was like, wow, what the hell? We started to investigate, maybe someone pushed it down, but it was a big tree, and the really weird thing was that it looked like it had been there for a long time. The top even looked like people had been climbing over it for years. So we all thought it was my two friends' father because he's kind of like a crazy woodsman, so everyone agreed, and we proceeded to climb over it. As we walked, I noticed that the trail, the woods, and the terrain all looked a lot different, they looked much greener and more dense, and the dirt looked darker, as if we took another trail or were in a completely different area but there's only one trail and one would there. I asked my friend, is something strange going on or what? He replied, I think we're on the wrong trail, but I know there's only one. Down the trail once again, there were more trees, but these ones were smaller, and it also looked like they had been there for a while. These trees were angled in such a way that you would have to climb through the middle of them. 
Now, at this point, we were freaking out, none of this was ever there. No one tried to investigate how they got there this time, we just climbed through and started to walk really fast. Nobody wanted to look behind us, we were just way too freaked out. Finally, we saw the end of the trail, but something was there. There were two vine bushes growing out of the ground, and they were woven together like some kind of archway. All of us stared at it, just puzzled, then quickly walked back to the cabin, only to find out we were gone for like two hours. Everyone was done packing, and we just didn't talk about it. We were still really confused and shocked. Some time later, all seven of us went back there and found no evidence of logs, trees, or archways. We all walked it again to find out how we had missed so much time. It was 10 minutes to the mud puddle and 10 back, I just don't know what happened. As for the woods changing, none of us can explain what happened that day. This happened about a year ago. I was going hiking by myself in a local area. It wasn't difficult, and I had been there before, just not on this path. Even though it was easy, I took too long and had to turn around instead of finishing the loop to beat the sunset. Emphasis on it being a loop. The path was marked with bright trail paint, and I followed it back to the trailhead. There were just a few random branches of trails that connected the loop to itself, but I recognized all of them, as they had large map boards, and never once felt like I could be lost. The sun started to set, though, and I still wasn't back where the trail began. I was worried I had somehow missed the opening, a giant sign slash opening in the trees, and ended up on the other side of the loop, so I turned around and walked a short distance back. After walking a tiny way back, I stumbled upon an opening as I described, a very large break in trees, a huge map sign. I felt incredibly discombobulated that I could miss it, but I was just glad to be out. However, my car wasn't there. This is a tiny nature park area in a city where there is one entrance to the loop that is just a break in the trees. The trailhead is just between 10 yards of playground slash green space from a parking lot of four parking spaces and a road. I was freaking out, thinking my car had gotten stolen, to the point where I almost called the police. My phone had no service, though. I started walking on the actual road in this area out of deep confusion or fear of it becoming night. I double-checked the trailhead to see if it was the same or if I got off path. Again, I couldn't find any evidence that I was somewhere new or on a different trail. I continued walking down this road, and I passed a small line of trees that showed an exact replica of the parking lot I had just walked from, except my car was actually there. Of course, I was just relieved and feeling stupid, so I went home. Something felt weird all night, though, so I drove back in the daylight the next day. There was only one parking lot. There was only one trailhead. I completely walked the trail this time, the whole loop, and I couldn't find any other trailhead or playground. I drove the entire road and around the nature park. There was not a single park similar to where I was. It should be noted that this was a very clean, well-marked loop for beginners. I looked at a map of all the trails, and none of them were close enough to this loop for me to even stumble upon them, and that's pretending there are two trailheads to find. I don't even believe in the matrix theory, but I really felt like a character walking through a game that's glitching and making copies of buildings. I'm not spiritual either, but even my religious friends I've told have made conspiracies that some higher power was protecting me by getting me out of the woods. This all happened maybe 15 years ago, when I was 20, in a little cabin far off in the Canadian wilderness. My buddy has a family cabin, which has been in the family for generations. It is down a long dirt road deep in the forest. There are no lights around, and the cabin has no electricity, running water, or insulation. The house does not have a bathroom, an outhouse is located some 20 meters from the house amongst the pine trees. We would go there every weekend and on holidays to spend some quiet time. Many ducked up esoteric things happened in that cabin, but on one occasion, needless to say, we got totally freaked out. Following an incident over the weekend, we convinced our girlfriends at the time to come and partake in the weirdness so they could see for themselves. We get to the cabin at around 8 p.m. on a Friday night and decide to unpack the car and prepare for the incoming storm. We light a fire in the kitchen and start making a meal. Nothing happens. We decide to go to bed. My girlfriend and I decide to take the room closest to the stairs that lead to the second floor, while my friend and his girl decide to sleep in the room closest to the main entrance. We go around the house, check the windows and doors, and set off to bed. A little side note is important here. The main entrance to the house is on a screen-covered patio, which has a screen door that can only be latched or locked from the inside. We latch the patio door and lock the main door, and we always leave the key in the lock of the main door, from the inside. At around 3 a.m. I check my watch, I am woken up by the sound of the front door opening and hear the screen door bang closed, it has a spring up top. I figure my buddy went out to the outhouse. 
The weird thing is that there is a hell of a storm going on out there. I wait about half an hour but don't hear my buddy come back in. At this point, I get up, get my flashlight, and head onto the screen patio. I move to the end and try to light the outhouse. I call out his name. No answer. At this moment, I realize that the front door is unlocked and the screen door is unlatched. Somebody is out there for sure. I grab my trusty blade and head out towards the outhouse to make sure I don't lock Buddy out. No one is in there. I check around with my flashlight, but nobody is out there. I get back into the house, latch the screen door, get in the house, and lock it up again. Do a quick tour of the house, nobody is up. In the back of my mind, I am thinking I have locked my buddy out, so I go to the room he is staying in and give it a quick look. He is there with his girlfriend. I go back to sleep. The next morning, I wake up and see my buddy is out with his girl, so we decide to make breakfast. I am on this patio, and my buddy comes back with his girl. He is looking at me with this weird look and asks, what the duck was that all about last night? What do you mean? I ask, last night I heard you go outside, then you came back in, came into my room, sat on the corner of the bed, woke us up, and started talking about my uncle Bob. I told you we were sleeping, but you kept rambling on, telling me Bob would no longer be a burden. How do you even know Bob? I never told you about him. Get the duck out of here, I say, and his girlfriend confirms that I was in the room for a good 20 to 30 minutes and then just got up and left. At this point, we commence shitting bricks as I explained to him that I took a look inside the room for a moment to make sure he was not outside because I heard the door. Later that night, we drive back. Our girlfriends are totally convinced that we did not make up the story or other tales about this weird cabin. At about 10 p.m. That night, my buddy calls me freaking out, he informs me that his grandfather just called him to tell him that his uncle Bob died the night before, at around 4 a.m. On a side note, having been in the family for generations, his father told me that the cabin is located in some hot zone of paranormal activity. For years, the family experienced all kinds of crazy stuff. This happened in December of 2009, and 10 years later, I still get chills retelling the story. My friends and I, four of us in total, used to like to go ghost hunting for fun. We would look up any local areas known for paranormal activity and go stalking about them, usually trespassing to do so, at night. Now that I think about it, it was very stupid, we were asking for trouble. We visited an old stone quarry on a very cold winter night. The quarry had been known for having caved in and killed a bunch of people who had been working there. So anyway, we're poking around the top of the quarry, it's like a big pit with piles of stone everywhere, and we weren't going to descend into it, being that it was dangerous. We were stupid, but not that stupid, I guess. So we're walking around the perimeter and just looking around, the whole area had a weird vibe to it, like a buzz you could feel. We split up into two groups of two and went in opposite directions just to see what kinds of stuff we might find. At one point, my friend and I heard a dog barking, which was odd because this was in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by a heavily wooded area, and to our knowledge, there were no houses nearby. We kind of got worried that maybe someone dumped an unwanted dog out there in the woods, because it's kind of whining now and we don't know what's happening to it. So the two of us decide to go in the direction the sound is coming from to see if the dog is in need of help. As we get closer, we see a set of boot tracks in the snow leading towards the woods, where we are going. They were fresh tracks, as it had been snowing pretty heavily and only stopped maybe 10 minutes before. We turn back to see where they are coming from, but there are none behind us. It's like someone just appeared out of thin air and started walking, but we don't see or hear anyone, and we're not sure when it happened, but the dog had stopped barking at this point, so we decided to follow the tracks just a bit out of stupid curiosity. We follow the tracks, maybe 30 feet into the woods, and come to a frozen pond. The tracks continue to cross the pond, and that's where we decided not to follow, for fear of falling through thin ice. Again, we were stupid, but not that stupid. So we turn back, and as we are following our own tracks back, we notice the other set, the one we had been following, is no longer there. We had walked beside them and not behind them, so we didn't destroy them, there was no breeze or anything to have wiped them away. At that point, we broke into a run and went to go find our other two friends and tell them about the freaky tracks. We get back to the quarry and start heading to the spot we agreed to meet back up at. It was up a little hill that had a chain-link fence at the top. We had all agreed to meet back up in 30 minutes when we split, which was around 11.30 p.m., so midnight was when we would meet at the fence. My friend asks me for the time. I look at my digital watch and see that it's 11.45 p.m. I tell my friend the time by showing him my watch. So we start to walk up this little hill, and that's when things get really weird. First, we saw this very bright light appear. At first, I thought someone had switched on a spotlight, 
but I don't see the source of the light. It just looks like a baseball-sized hole in the pitch-black night sky, and it's shining light out of it, and it looks like it's getting bigger. I turned to my friend to get his reaction, and I realized he was talking to me, yelling at me, actually, but I didn't hear a thing. Nothing, it's dead silent. Thinking he's playing a joke on me, I start to say something, and I realize that I can't hear my own voice. We look up towards the fence, and our other two friends are standing there in the distance, so we run the rest of the way up the hill. When we are about halfway to the top, the light just blinks out, and we can hear again. We continue to the fence, but our friends aren't there. We're both really confused, as we both saw them there. Then we look down the hill, and our friends are coming up it in total panic. They start screaming at us when they get to the top. Where the hell have you guys been? We thought you got lost in the woods, we've been searching for hours. Hours? We were only gone 15 minutes, and the walk up the hill could have only taken maybe 5 at the most, but when I look down at my watch, it says it's almost 2 a.m. I show my friend who had been with me, and he just turns completely white and looks terrified. He saw the time, 11.45 p.m., at the bottom of the hill. My friend and I tell the other two about what happened, and they say they saw us walking towards the woods, and then it was like we vanished into the dark, so they turned and followed us through the snow to the edge of the woods, but they couldn't see our tracks, so they turned back and waited a bit. But when we didn't come back out of the woods for a long time, they started to panic and started looking around the tree line trying to find a trace of where we went. As they were looking for us, they thought they saw a light shining behind them, and that's when they turned in our direction and noticed we were at the fence. They said when they turned around, there was no light, so they thought we had signaled them with a flashlight and then turned it off. They also said they never heard a dog bark, but if they were behind us, that would not be possible, it was barking like crazy and loudly for several minutes. It freaked us all out so badly that we all just decided to go home and never go ducking around in dark, haunted places again. So what do you guys think happened there? Was it some sort of weird time warp or possibly an alternate dimension we stepped into when we followed the tracks? And what about the tracks that came out of nowhere and the impossible barking dog? So my friend lives by a playground, so when I go there, we usually go there and swing for a bit. But there's also this trail that surrounds this pond, but the top half of the trail is woods, the entrance slash playground is in the south, and we go walk that trail, and this day was strange from the start. We both felt dreadful that day for no reason, and the sky looked weird. Like a brownish color. I just thought it was an incoming storm, it wasn't, but anyway, we walked it once, and it was okay. We mainly just talk about how, when it's quiet, we can feel nature, but at the end of the trail, on the way back to the playground, we see that the ballpark, made for small games, is open. It's never locked, so it's obvious why it's open, so we close it. But then we feel angry. All of a sudden, my friend says he feels annoyed. I ask why, and he just talks about some of our petty problems, and later in the conversation, I bring up being disappointed in video games. I say, I call it the Bioshock effect, because I thought Bioshock would be a free roam and it's not, so I was disappointed, but all of a sudden we hear this loud noise coming from the top half of the trail like a vacuum. But really loud. ATVs are all vehicles that are not allowed to be in the woods, so it couldn't be that, and there was no one at the playground at this time. So we were freaked out. But being adrenaline junkies, we walked the trail again, and as we got closer, it did get louder, so we knew it was in the woods. But as we did, I kept having strange thoughts. Not evil ones. Like life after death and such. And eventually, we got very close to where the sound was. And it sounded like a vacuum, but extremely loud. And it had cut off like one. So eventually, we got freaked out and ran back. So, I know things like skinwalkers make loud noises, but they're usually screams. Plus, there's a lot of stuff that would put them off, like playgrounds and ballparks. And the trail is far from any house, so we weren't just hearing someone vacuuming their house. And the whole day was strange in itself. My wife, sister, and I are all avid backpackers, we spend a lot of time in the outdoors, but back in 2018-ish, we decided to do pull-up camping with stargazing in Colorado as the main goal, we are from the Midwest. We used a light pollution map to find a remote camping area in San Juan National Forest and planned to hike during the day and stargaze at night. The first day and night, the stars and trails were amazing, and we were all super stoked to be in the mountains and away from flat land. It was the clearest I have ever seen the Milky Way galaxy, and it was phenomenal. After the first night, we all got up early and decided to do another hike, this time following a small dirt forest road through the mountains. We were all having a great time, and there were nothing but positive vibes. I mentioned that our hike felt more like a walk since we were on a road, so we all agreed to take the first proper trail we came across. We had a GPS unit, 
map, and compass, so we weren't worried about getting lost. We finally came across a trail that ran perpendicular to the road and had a slight gradient, running down the mountain. Staying true to our word, we all agreed to see where it went and turned onto the trail. As soon as we left the road and stepped onto the trail, I had an unprovoked and overwhelming feeling of doom come over me. Suddenly, my excitement left me, and I felt, almost instinctually, that I would be in serious danger if I went down this trail. This unprovoked feeling of doom was strange enough, but when my sister said, guys, I don't think we should go down this trail, and my wife responded, oh my god, you feel that too. I lost my shit we quickly returned to the road and continued our walk. We all agreed we had the same unprovoked sensation once we stepped onto the trail and could not come up with any logical explanation. I have never experienced anything like this, and it still gives me goosebumps thinking about it. So this happened about a year ago. I was visiting my family, who live in the country, which is four hours south of the city where I am currently living for university. I came down for the weekend to see my family and friends. My best friend was dating my sister at the time, so he was always around our house. So the day after I arrived, we both decided to go and visit our friend, who lived 10 minutes out of town. The first 5 minutes are on your normal tar road, then you turn left onto a one-way gravel road that leads into the forest. My friend's house was at the end of the road, this road is very narrow, and only one car can fit on it at a time. On both sides of the road are fences and high trees, and there's no turn-off at all until my friend's place. Anyway, it was around 7 o'clock o'clock at night when my pal and I decided to go over. So we left my parents' house and drove out of town. From the tar road, you can see the gravel road for a few moments. As we were approaching the turn onto the gravel road, I noticed a car parked on the side of the gravel about 200 meters down, facing forward. This was strange because I had never seen a car on this road before. I shrugged it off and kept driving. As I turned onto the gravel road, this overwhelming feeling came over me, it was the feeling of dread. It seemed like something bad was going to happen. It made me feel very uncomfortable. My best friend, who was in the passenger seat, also felt the feeling, as he said, he felt strange. This terrible feeling only grew stronger when we approached the car. I was about 15 meters away from the car. It had its lights on, just sitting there. As I came around the bend, it pulled out and started driving. I caught up to it pretty quickly. I was about 7 meters away from the car at this stage. I remember the feeling becoming very intense. It was so strange. It was growing stronger. I remember just staring at the back of the car for a few minutes, and so was my friend. My friend was muttering the number plate when I decided to look at the speed on my dashboard. At the exact time I did this, my friend looked at his phone to change the song. I took my eyes off the road for milliseconds. But when I looked up, the car had vanished. I immediately said, what the duck? Which alerted my friend to look up. I was speechless at this stage. He relied on, where's the car? And where has it gone? We both started looking around, but we didn't know where it could have gone. It's a one-way road in the forest, with fences on both sides, the feeling didn't leave either. It was so intense. It was like my body was telling me to get the duck out of there. Gut instinct. At this stage, we turned off the music. I guess we were both trying to figure out what had happened. The rest of the car trip was silent. We got to our friend's house, and the rest was a blur. The feeling eased down a bit, but I still didn't feel right. I didn't end up drinking because I was so puzzled by what happened. We didn't end up staying long. As we were driving home, the feeling came back, but stronger than ever, right in the same spot where the car disappeared. I quickly sped off and tried not to think about it. I came home and instantly told my sister, she replied, that sounds like a glitch. My friend and I still discuss it every now and then. We think the car accidentally crossed over into our universe, and something glitched. And the car appeared, then disappeared. I don't know. It still confuses me to this day. My new home in the middle of the woods. The first incident, on Monday, I moved into a new home 45 minutes from any kind of civilization. I have two roommates here that I know rather well, so on my move-in date, we had a small get-together with our mutual friends. I was clearing the table for a card game, and while moving a vase, I chipped the bottom badly on the edge of the counter. We all shrugged it off, I picked up a couple quarter-ish sized chunks of ceramic, and we continued with our night. In the morning, we were replacing things on the table, and my roommate was like, hey, didn't you break this? There was not a scratch on the vase, but we all saw it happen, and they all watched me pick up the broken pieces, we couldn't find the pieces in the trash. The second incident, with me, I brought a large, well-loved TV for my room. I've had it for a couple years, and it's great, 
but the batteries fall out of the remote all the time because the back plastic to hold them in went missing at some point. Before I moved, I taped over the back so I wouldn't lose the batteries en route. Last night, I picked it up to start a show with a friend, and the back was on it. There is no reasonable way it could end up here, and I even asked my sister, who helped with the move, if she had found and replaced it, but she had no idea what I was talking about. Two nights ago, my girlfriend and I were driving from Arcata, California, to Eureka, California, a 15-minute drive that I have done hundreds of times. It was a cold and icy rainstorm after having unusually warm weather for weeks. At roughly 10.57 p.m., we merged onto the motorway in Arcata. My girlfriend put on a three-minute song on Spotify, and I merged into the left lane of the motorway to pass a slow driver. Then, suddenly, we were entering Eureka. The song is still playing. I noticed something was wrong right away and got freaked out. There's no way anyone can cover the distance we covered in a car in less than three minutes. Also, I was driving at about 55 miles per hour because of the super low visibility. I cried a little bit because I'm usually skeptical about this kind of thing, and it challenged everything I believed. I pulled over at a gas station in Eureka to call my sister and tell her, my phone says that was at exactly 11.02 p.m. So in five minutes, I went from entering the motorway in a different town to being parked at a gas station 8.2 miles away. I don't think I would have noticed if it wasn't for the song still playing. My girlfriend didn't notice, but when I pointed out to her that the song was still on and showed her what time it was on the clock, then she was pretty shaken too. We talked about it for hours afterward. Being from Pennsylvania, I've done a lot of adventuring through forests in my day. Ever since I was very young, around 10 or so, me and my best friend have used a single trail through a small patch of wood near his house as a shortcut to a park. We called it the Lost Woods, for no real reason other than the fact that we are both huge fans of The Legend of Zelda. A few years ago, he claimed he saw something like a fairy, about the size of your average moth, float near his face while crossing through those woods. I told him that he may have seen something abnormal, but you can never claim you saw a fairy with 100% certainty, you know? Anyway, despite how sure he was of what he saw, I never thought much of it other than, well, that's kind of interesting. Fast forward a few years. That friend has moved away, out of state. I decide to go for a walk, and for old time's sake, I take that trail, or so I intend to. However, when I come to where the entrance to the trail used to be, there is nothing. I think, well, maybe it grew in? Though it seemed very unlikely as the trail was very old and well beaten, and I had been there less than a year prior. I decide, duck it, I'll cut through the brush and get to it that way. Mind you, this isn't a very large stretch of forest, maybe a few hundred feet across, so there's no way I could really just lose it. However, upon bushwhacking my way to where the trail used to be, I realized that the place I used to know was completely gone. Not in the way that it was grown over or anything. It was just a completely different place. The creek that followed the side of the trail was completely gone, with no evidence that it or the trail ever existed. What used to be dense, thick wood is now a wide, open space with few trees. In the middle of it all was an old truck that looked like it had been rotting there for 50 years. There was some kind of utility pipe sticking out of the ground, which also looked a few decades old. Neither the truck nor the pipe were ever there before. Where there used to be hills covered in trees and brush, there is now flat land covered in nothing but dead leaves. I know this might seem silly, like the forest took back the trail or something like that, but when you grow up in a place and see it all the time, you know it like the back of your hand. It's very difficult to explain the profound difference I felt through text, but I know that it wasn't normal. The area I used to know was very distinct and obvious. I can still remember the specific changes in terrain along the trail. The area there now is a completely different place, devoid of any similarity other than the fact that it is still a forest. I even investigated all the surrounding woods, which isn't much, seeing as this is inside of a neighborhood after all, to make sure I wasn't just missing it, but there was no trace of it at all, Anywhere, I still can't wrap my head around it, but I suppose it has earned the name we gave it 10 years ago. This happened during my high school year, when I was 16 years old. My technical school was doing sort of an annual camping trip in one of them close to the school, ours is in a very rural village near a couple of mountains, which involves typical team building activities like camping and jungle trekking. There is a resort built there. The jungle trekking was on the second day, which involved following a predetermined track along the side of the mountain that took about 20 to 30 minutes and led back to the camping site. Each team had three girls and three boys, and since we were considered adult enough, we were on our own while teachers and firemen watched from a distance, concealed, they were practically following beside us on a lower mountain level, and each group followed one another over a five-minute gap. 
Now all the adults had warned us about behaving ourselves during the trekking. Don't pluck the leaves and ruin the plants on purpose, don't curse, etc. Basically, just behave, don't act like an asshole, and respect nature. But my school is a technical school with loads of really naughty boys, so as you expected, the boys in my team purposely do all the things adults told us not to do, even going as far as slashing or marking the tree for fun. We are the second or third group to be released, and right after the adults were out of sight, they started being their asshole selves, laughing all the way. The girls tried to scold them, but to no avail. The trek was supposed to be very simple, climbing a slightly steep trail for 5 minutes until we found a branching trail, then going to the right and spending the remaining time on a fairly straight trek, I didn't know about this before the trekking started, only after we were discovered. And there were also footprints of the earlier group to follow. I see the footprints, but somehow the boys don't, and they insist that we go left. And I, being the silent, non-arguing type, just gave up and followed them. At first, the trek was fine, straight, and wide, the woods are bright, and we can see the river near our camping site and all the wood noises. The boys continued to act like jackasses. But I was hit by a weary feeling because there was no one at the river, while I was sure teachers and firemen had gathered at the river when the jungle trekking started. And some teachers with families brought their kids to play beside the river bank. And the wood noises started to fade the deeper we went. After walking for about 30 minutes, the path started to become harder. We had to climb a fallen tree, rocks, a narrow, slippery trek, poking branches, and a lot of nature, but not a single animal, insect, or any living thing. And I was pretty sure we crossed the same fallen tree and big rock a couple of times. But we are still at the edge of the mountain because we can still see the river. The woods aren't dense, at the start of the trek, it was pretty hot and sunny, we started around 10 am, but now it is cloudy, chilly, and, weirdly enough, very silent. No chirping birds, no buzzing, nothing. The boys had long become very quiet, and us girls don't have the strength anymore, we just continue to walk. I fell a couple of times, the other girl scrapped her knee, the third girl ripped her sleeve, and while the boys were fine, they grew paler and paler. We are quiet now, and together with the quiet woods, it was extremely quiet. We just keep walking and walking and walking for what seems like eternity, while I keep glancing towards the river because I feel like there is something there. Finally, after walking for what felt like hours, we all decided to backtrack our steps, trying to find the branch trail again. After another hour, we finally found it, and suddenly there were noises all around us, sounds of the animals, teachers and students yelling our names, firemen igniting very loud firecrackers, and kids playing in the water. It turns out that after we failed to show up after our earlier group and the next group after we told the teachers they didn't see us at all along the way, the jungle trekking was promptly halted, and they started searching for us. They all cover both of the branches, the actual trek and the trek that we followed while igniting those really loud firecracker balls that can be heard one kilometer away. They also ignited those along the river banks following our lost trails. But they failed to trace any kind of footprint along the trail we followed, and while there are still men on our lost trails, we just seemed to emerge at the branching trek. And we were gone for two hours, while we all felt like we had been walking for half a day. The sun was still shining brightly, and it was still hot, but we were all cold and clammy, and the guys were almost blue. We were scolded very harshly, but the adults decided to cover this up because they didn't want to make too much fuss, and it was really our fault anyway. After all that havoc, we returned to the campsite, and other students came asking us about our experience. The guys stayed silent, and us girls just answered what we could. One kid said, you guys didn't hear the firecrackers at all? It was so loud and continuous that it felt like the ground was shaking. You said you could see the river all that time, didn't you see the firemen with the crackers? They covered quite far along the lost trail. And all we can say is that we didn't hear anything at all, not until at the branch where we were suddenly bombarded with all the noises. The woods were silent, very silent. A few months ago, I was hiking at a state forest that I frequented. I had been there hundreds of times prior and had never had a strange experience. It's a very large area, just under 2,000 acres, with lots of long trails and wild forests surrounding. There are two parking lots, one on the east and one on the west sides, they are separated by a good distance. That day I went to the eastern lot slash trails, and I gladly found I was the only person or car there, which isn't unusual because it's a very secluded state forest and it's rare for there to be many people, which is why I like it. I usually like going off the trail into the woods and into places that look untouched or that are just really, really far away from anything man-made. This day was no different, I took off with my dog onto a trail. I hiked quite a distance, maybe 6 miles, into the woods on a trail until I found a place where the riverbed and the trail crossed. I decided to follow the riverbed deeper into the forest and off of the trail. 
I walked very deep, maybe three more miles, into the woods, following the river bed. Then, as I was walking, I heard what sounded like a very distant conversation between two people. I stopped and listened, and everything was so dead, but I could still make out the faintest sound of two people talking. It was so faint that I just thought it might be an animal. I thought there was no good reason for people to be out there, which is very unlikely. The sound gradually faded, so I just ignored it and kept going. The bed I was walking in was in a valley, and on both sides were steep hills, so I decided to climb up the right side hill to get a good view and then turn around to make for about a 16 mile hike both ways. So me and my dog climbed up this hill. I climb very exhaustively up until it flattens out, and then I find a rock to sit on and take a break. I was just sitting there in absolute silence with my dog when, out of ducking nowhere, I heard two people talking to each other. It was as clear as day, but I couldn't make out a single word being spoken. It's coming from right around this bend on a cliff on next to. This scares the ducking shit out of me, as you could imagine. I was there for the sole purpose of getting as far away as possible from other people. It's so loud, I feel like I should have been able to see them right in front of me, but I can't. Just out of nowhere, two loud voices emanating from seemingly nowhere are indistinguishable. Now keep in mind that I arrived at a secluded state forest with an empty parking lot and no other cars, and you need a car to access it. There is no second entrance or secondary way to access that point that I am aware of. I walked deep into the woods, very far off the trail, and then up a very foreboding hill to a very high point when this happened. Also keep in mind that it was the start of spring and the ground was covered in at least a foot of dead leaves and twigs. My movements through the woods would have sounded like a freight train, so they would have heard me coming, and I would have heard any other movement besides my own, but I didn't hear anything. The voices started, then went silent within about one minute, and by then I was getting the duck out of there because I was honestly scared. But that's not where it ends. I finally reach the river bed again and am quickly making my way towards the trail I left. It's at this point that I hear these two voices harmoniously making these strange wolf cry animal like sounds behind me. This happens over and over, they keep making this crying or howling sound for a long time. Even when I'm on the trail, I can hear it in the distance for a long time. Nevertheless, I finally reach my car with my dog, and we get the duck out of there. There is still not a car in the lot or anywhere to be seen. It could just be some incredibly hardcore outdoorsman who had been roaming the woods for a while, but still. Why the howling? Why didn't they make any noise, and why didn't they seem to acknowledge my approach, which they obviously would have heard? These voices were coming from within 10 yards. Ike, I just thought it might be a glitch. 